You just heard uh, Sarkozy's speech. Uh, I would like to have your view on the European debt crisis. Uh, it's the second time you come to Europe uh, since the beginning of the year. That's uh, right. He's talking about uh, the cataclysm that would be uh, a failure of the euro this year. What's your view on this, and how is that going to impact the global economy this year? I, what I can see now, and I saw earlier in the year in, in, in Paris, uh, is a very firm commitment to the euro on the part of all policymakers and uh, political authorities. President Sarkozy was very clear about it. Uh, he said, never. Never will we, uh, you know, fail the euro. We will stand behind the euro. And what you will probably see is countries coming, uh, more coming into the euro than leaving the euro area. So I, I would expect uh, to see an enlargement of the euro area. The question is how strong a euro will be is a different question. Uh, it is not a matter of having or not having the euro, but what role will the euro play beyond being a currency that serves well the European Union or uh, you know, a big part of the members of the European Union. And for that, I think the current problems in several European countries are certainly an issue because these countries will need backing from a, you know, a European Central Bank or some kind of facility and that will probably mean having more euros in place and more euros circulating. So uh, that is part of the question. A weak Europe is not good for the euro in terms of the strength of the euro. Just one simple question. Do you think, yes or no, that 2011 may be the year the euro might break up? I don't think the euro will break up. I don't think the euro. It's just it, what I'm saying is, look, ten years ago, the dollar had 71 percent of world reserves. The, today, the dollar has 61 percent of world reserves, meaning 61 percent of the world reserves are held in dollars. Yeah. And the euro has about 20 something, 22, 25 percent. Question is, will we see more international reserves? Because now I'm judging the euro as, you know, a reserve currency, which is one. A way of judging a currency and you will probably see if you have a stronger Europe, a Europe that can contain the problems in the periphery, then you will see a stronger euro. Otherwise we will see, if you see a weak euro, uh, a weak Europe means a weak euro. So uh, I don't see a breakup of the euro, I will see countries standing strong behind the euro and uh, I, would, I see no, you know it is in the interest of Europe to retain the euro and in the interest of the world also to have a strong currency that could compete with the dollar. Would you raise your reserves in euro? We have uh, diversified our reserves and we have a portion of our reserves in euros. Do you plan uh, to raise usually. your reserves in euros this year? This is a policy I cannot disclose because it's part of our uh, you know the investment that we do and uh, we have a uh, but uh, the euro is the second currency in which we, we hold uh, reserves uh, the number one being the dollar. I asked you earlier this year about the currency war uh, but obviously it's, it's back on the agenda. Uh, Nicolas Sarkozy actually said a few days ago that he wanted to bring the G20 uh, maybe back to a smaller group of G7 or G8 to uh, actually address uh, these issues of um, sorry of, uh, of currency. Sure. Uh, and of uh, mon monetary distractions. Uh, so what do you think of the situation right now? Are we going to have more currency wars? And do you support Nic uh, Nicolas Sarkozy's idea of having a smaller group uh, than the G20 for uh, the currency, um, to address well, the I, currency? I think the issue of uh, uh, the France as uh, the presidency of the G8 and the G20, and I think they want to use it, and the President Sarkozy is very clear, and they want to use it for uh, a useful purpose and for particular uh, issues like uh, international monetary system to discuss the future of the international monetary system. And the aspect of currency wars is part of the issue. You know, currency wars happen uh, in an environment in which you have currencies that don't move according to market forces, and you have, you know, particular currencies with big increases in the supply of that currency and then you have a lot of countries like our countries in Latin America you know who are doing well countries that are growing strongly and are having big capital inflows and are trying to uh, you know in some way defend themselves against the pressures of currency appreciation which can be disruptive in if uh, this is significant so uh, you know I think that uh, it's a good idea to discuss the issue I hope that it is done in a longer, in a larger group because, I mean, Chile does not belong to the G8 or the G20, so I hope that, you know, and we have been uh, active in this uh, discussion uh, in the international uh, arena, so I think that the 
idea and the perspective of countries, emerging countries, which are doing well and are in the middle of this war, if you can, you know, as, as it has been called, I think it's an interesting perspective. Because you have the issues of intervention, you have capital controls, and you have many ways in which different countries are going in different directions, eh, but with the same kind of problems. If you take a group of, let's say, 10 countries, which I can mention, no. Maybe I have one last question about sure. the Doha talks. Uh, there is um, uh, obviously a revival. Uh, Pascal Lamy is trying to uh, revive the, the WTO talks on, on Doha, on the Doha round. Yes. Uh, do you think that's dead on arrival? Um, I wouldn't say it's dead on arrival. It's just that it, people are a little skeptical about the Doha round just because it has taken so long, it has been too difficult to make uh, progress and to conclude the round. I wouldn't say it's dead, I would say that uh, the Doha round faces uh, you know, difficulties, but I of course consider it a very significant uh, you know, uh, improvement in the international trade uh, you know, mechanism if we can make progress, incorporate services and have a deal like you know, that is not blocked. Right now, we don't have a deal. Of course, when I come here and I listen every year, the prospects of Doha, and, but you see, because of the way the WTO works, it, you know, a few countries can block progress in the WTO. So I always expect that the uh, agreement is reached, that we can fend off against protectionism, which will kill the recovery. I mean, it, it, strong protectionism, if that is the case, which hasn't happened, by the way, but if, if I think we need to see more liberalization. It is good for the emerging countries, it's good for developing countries to have access to the markets of the rich economies, and I think it is the developed nations in this particular case that has a lot to say in terms of the willingness to open their markets, you know, and receive goods from developing countries in, Af in Africa, in Latin America, in Asia. Lovely. Thank you so much, Mr. Larry. Thank you.